As the gusts of wind clear the leaden clouds, it becomes clearer. And through a background of reddish sky and a sad dawn, we glimpse the town on high. It can only be Viana. Here is how the narrator Pio Barroja described his arrival into the city of Viana in his great novel, Dalekane the Adventurer. Viana lies on a meseta 469 meters high in the extreme southwest of Navarra. It belongs to the county of Estrella, at the municipal borders of the south with the river Ebro, a natural border which separates the Rioja and the eastern borders of the Alavesa lands. To the north, the Sierra de Codes shelters it from the rains and winds from the Atlantic sloping land with valleys and rivulets into the Ebro and the fertile land which surrounds it. An extensive plain with Mediterranean climate, abundant with fruit and crammed with vegetables, these well irrigated lands offer a wide range of agricultural products such as cereals, vines, olives and almonds. The quality of these products is reflected in the denomination of origin quality approved label on products such as wine from La Rioja, asparagus, oil, pacharan from Navarra and piquillo de lodosa. The richness of these lands is what illustrates to us that there was a human presence here years ago. A handheld axe which is over 200,000 years old demonstrates that before Paleolithic times, groups of humans took advantage of the area's resources. Neolithic people settled here and in the north we find an impressive burial ground from 3000 BBC. The posterior Celtiberican town of La Castodia was destroyed about 100 BC during the Sertorian Wars and seems to point to Oracos, the capital of the Berons, who preceded the Roman Vareya. But the origin of the Viana we know today comes from the start of the 13th century. In 1219, when Sancho VII the Strong founded this town as a military base for the Kingdom of Navarra at the borders of Castile. The town centre illustrates this with narrow streets enclosed by walls. And we can see the resemblance the town has to a fortress. Its place in the way of St James enabled it to absorb new ideas, people and influences from all over Western Europe. In the 15th century, Carlos III the Noble endowed his grandson Carlos with the title Prince of Viana. He was following a trend already laid down by other monarchs in France, England, Aragon and Castile, with titles such as the Dauphin, the Prince of Wales, Prince of Asturias and Lord of Castile and Girona. Viana's great splendour came between the 16th and 18th century after being incorporated into Castile when it received the title of city from King Philip IV in 1630. But the wars between Napoleon's troops and the Carlists was what drove it into steady decline. Economically, it didn't recover until the 60s in the last century when industry came to the area. This allowed work to be done to recuperate its urban monuments and restore public and private buildings and also the walled area whilst creating a green area and gardens. Today about 4,000 Viennese take pride in their past and look forward to their future with great enthusiasm. Set in the axis of the Ebro and next to the highway that links Pamplona with Logroño, the 
three business parks together make a hive of industry. A united place that brings together modern infrastructure with sports and leisure buildings. Including the library, the cultural house and the house of Navarro Villoslada. On the outskirts of Vienna we find a spectacular natural environment with the Laguna de las Cañas one of the most important wetlands declared a protected nature reserve for birds. In the 100 hectares, herons, egrets, an imperial purple heron's nest, and species such as lapwings, mallard ducks and coots spend the winter. The bird observatory in El Bordon lets us observe and contemplate the ecological wealth of the area and the numerous amphibians, reptiles and small mammals that dwell in this peculiar vegetation. <laughs>